What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step milk. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I'm going to instantly react to the college football playoff selection, well, ranking show for week 14. Ought to be a good time. I'm excited to talk about it with you. Going to figure out whether or not Ohio State actually needed to play against Illinois to keep their ranking. See what it means that Notre Dame gets into the ACC championship game because of some moving and shaking done by the ACC that I'll probably have some time to get into. See where Brigham Young ranks in all of this because, well, I wrote a piece on FoxSports.com about BYU and about the moniker that it is, well, trying to live up to, if not outright pilfered, from Southern Miss and being an independent. That means going to schedule somebody that we respect and, more importantly, that the committee respects. Yes, this is my Bobby Boucher on because I'm excited to go hit him. So I want you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we're going to get into it because, like, the only thing I can, I think we all agree on is Alabama is an absolute juggernaut. Yeah, man. Number one, Alabama destroys Auburn in the Iron Bowl. Notre Dame ends up pulling away from North Carolina in the second half. Clemson destroys Pitt. Like, it was senior day for Trevor Lawrence, and he went out with, like, that over 400 yards passing in that game. Clemson might actually be good. I'm not sure if Notre Dame is, even though they went and got a W against Clemson, because as many of you know, and as I've said repeatedly, no Trevor Lawrence, but also no Tyler Davis, no Mike Jones, and no James Skalski. Cincinnati had a game canceled against Temple, which sucks. Tulsa had a game canceled as well, but Tulsa needs to beat Navy, basically, to get into the American Championship game, in which I think they'll do that, and then we get back-to-back -back games versus Cincinnati. So if... Clemson loses to Virginia Tech. Miami can get in with a win. So Clemson has to actually go up to Blacksburg and stop a mud hole in Vitek and walk it dry. I understand that. I get that. Sucks for Wake Forest. Notre Dame, congratulations on making your first conference championship in the history of Notre Dame football. Nice for you guys to, you know, finally get that conference championship bid that you've all been looking forward to. This, this year, man. The first ever time that Notre Dame has ever been a part of a conference and yes they end up in the conference championship game so that we will never ever hear the end of it from Notre Dame fans ever you know what good for y'all I'm here for it give us all the smoke because the thing I love most about this sport is the trash talking that we do for each other Ooh, that's a that's actually a good point Herbie's out here saying that perhaps Notre Dame already secured a spot in the college football playoff by getting into the ACC title game it's a decent look Especially knowing what we know about Ohio State and its COVID situation, how the Big Ten might actually disqualify Ohio State from playing in the Big Ten championship game. Ooh, Raging Cajuns at number 25, Tulsa at number 24, Oregon at number 23, Washington getting in, number 22, and number 21, Marshall. I like it. I can get behind that. I can understand that. We got USC at 20, we got Iowa at 19, we got Coastal Carolina, who is undefeated, at number 18, we got UNC at number 17 and Wisconsin at number 16. UNC moved up with a loss. They're 6-3. and three. My God. People really love North Carolina football. Like, I thought they played decently against Notre Dame, but I'm not going to move them up two spots because of it. That's wild. Coastal Carolina cannot get any respect from anybody. They move up the same amount as North Carolina with, with with a loss. Oklahoma State at 15, Northwestern at 14, BYU at 13, up one spot. Indiana at 12, and Oklahoma stands pat at 11. They had to postpone their game against West Virginia for positive COVIDs. Hope that they can play against Baylor this weekend. It's interesting. BYU is going to have to schedule a Power 5 team, man. They're going to have to do it. I've, I wrote as much. You had two open dates. You needed to fill them. Like, Indiana goes and gets a win over the weekend. They lose Michael Penix Jr. People want to tell me that Jack Tuttle is just as good as Michael Penix Jr. If that's the case, then why wasn't Jack Tuttle starting? If he's just as good, why not, why not start him? Peyton Ramsey got ran off. He's quarterbacking a, look, probably a top 10 Northwestern team now that, now that we're about to look at it. Miami at number 10, 7-1. and one. Miami taking care of business, taking care of everything they can. Iowa State at number 9. With a win against Texas. People, gas it up, Texas, still. You can still launch yourself in there. 
with a win against Texas. Iowa State also in the Big 12 championship game has an opportunity to win their first Big 12 championship ever. First conference championship in like 80 years. They'd have to get past what I think is going to be Oklahoma with a win against Baylor, win against West Virginia. Not out of the question at all. Goodness me. Iowa State. They didn't even look good against Texas. Like, I watched that, uh, that OU, or excuse me, OU, that Texas IU, ISU game. And I'm thinking Oklahoma might be a two-touchdown favorite against either one of those teams, the way that they played in that game. Georgia at number eight, six and two, coming off the dismantling of South Carolina. Like, all right, fine, whatever. We're, we're, we're ranking Georgia, I guess, based off of how we feel about the roster. Cincinnati stands pat at number seven, eight and oh. So not a whole hell of a lot of moving, except with Iowa State, who jumps up four spots with the win against a ranked Texas at the time, I believe number 17. That's all right. Iowa State being a top 10 team is certainly going to help Oklahoma get into the New Year's Six Bowl. I'm kidding. Maybe. Yeah, man. Cincinnati got to play Tulsa twice. That's going to be a tough game. I hope that it's a tough game. I hope Zayvon Collins can win a Buckus Award over this. He's been playing the best linebacker of anybody in the country. Think about that statement for a second. Yo, man. If the ACC can amend its conference championship schedule and its weekly schedule, why couldn't the Big Ten? Just going to put that out there. So we're about to talk about teams one through six here, the New Year's Six Bowl spots. Let me check out what y'all saying in the chat here while David Pollock is getting his in. Dude says it's only a second live show. That's what I appreciate Doc Winston, oh boogie, pushing aside stuff to be here with us. He'll moderate the chat. Appreciate that, Doc. How was Georgia at eight? Yeah, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Like, their only losses are to a Florida team that's going to play an SEC championship game and an Alabama team that's going to play an SEC championship game. Like, I get that. I get, I get that you want to make them the best two-loss team, but I don't put them at eight. Right? You know? Like, I just, I don't, I don't put them at eight. I'd actually, I'm thinking that the Raging Cajuns are getting done up because they could have, they could potentially have beaten the Big 12 champion to open the season. And they're at 25. But y'all don't want to talk about that because y'all ain't really ULL fans like that. I wanted to see where Ohio State would be. That's that's true. I like Florida's gonna have to play Alabama. If Florida beats Alabama, absolutely positively getting in. The thing we know for certain though is Alabama's getting in. Alabama stomps a mud hole, walks dry at LSU. They get into their they 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 get into their 10th game, they get in the SEC championship game. They're going to win the whole damn thing, we think. But if Florida was able to absolutely go get a W, that means that both those SEC teams would be in for these. We'd have two SEC teams in for the second time in, what, four years? Right? Like, it's like that. Because Florida's just that good offensively. Like, the thing that actually gives me pause about Florida is the thing that gives me pause about Ohio State. Secondary defense, it's got issues. You can score on them, you can move the ball on them. That's not a good thing once you get into these final four situations. Just ask 2017 Oklahoma, 2018 Oklahoma, and uh, 2019 Oklahoma how that goes if you don't show up there with a defense that can stop the sort of offense that you're used to seeing go get you W's. Yeah, man, Florida controls its own destiny. That's all you can ask in situations like this because that's a luxury. Kyle Trask is out there doing the most, and I know that there's a bunch of people that want to make him the Heisman Trophy winner, but like the Heisman voting, I believe, isn't going to be done until after the conference championship weekend, and that might have as much to say about who wins it as anything else because we're thinking about not just Kyle Trask and Mac Jones, but also Justin Fields if he's in the Big Ten championship game. Now you're looking at perhaps a Big Ten championship game if Ohio State can't play against Michigan State or Michigan that doesn't include them. Now, Ohio State was also able to practice today, which is a very big step forward in playing against Michigan State in East Lansing, but it's not a given that they get that game next week against Michigan. Hope that they keep a lid on this thing, but they got to make it through the next two weeks, and then they got to make it into the Big Ten Championship game. And something we haven't actually talked about is, what if we have kids or enough kids that test positive or going to be out with COVID protocols that you have to push back the Big Ten Championship game or you have to push back the SEC Championship game? Or even, bless God, the college football playoff itself. Everybody wants those teams to be full strength. And I don't know that that's going to be true. Like, we could be dealing with a COVID protocol situation in these championship games that 100% matter. Now, that's a good point. Like, Ohio State is in a very nervous situation. That's where I'm at with them. Because, like, 
once you get into the situation, it's usually one of two things, right? One of one of the things that I've noticed in watching teams come back from the COVID protocols is they look lackadaisical. They look like they haven't done anything for five, seven days, and it shows on the field. Now, Clemson is the one team that that didn't seem to matter for in losing that game against Florida State. That said, they were practicing the whole time, right? They didn't lose the game because they were positive. They lost the game because Florida State was positive. That's a big difference. Ohio State having to shut down the facilities and having to shut down everything they're doing up until this Tuesday between Friday and now, I want to see if that actually matters in the way that it seemed to matter for Texas A&M, who hadn't played a game in three weeks and looked like it against an LSU team that is not good. Now, they won 20-7, but Kellen Mond did not look good at all. He got outplayed by two true freshman quarterbacks at LSU in a game he won 20-7. If not for... Isaiah Spiller going off for 141 and Anaya Smith just being nice and that defense actually coming to play, especially front seven and defensive line, it might be a different ball game for Texas A&M because LSU was able to get stops on key third downs against dudes that I expect to be playing in the NFL, like Jalen Weidemeyer, right? If they were able to stop the run, that would be the thing. Hey, Will Worley getting in here. New member to the channel. Appreciate that, dog. Buckeyes are going to have to play, uh, play the last two games they allowed to play a different opponent if Michigan cancels. No, they are not. That game just goes away. And if Michigan cancels, I feel that they are going to be playing that game against Wisconsin. But here's the thing. You can change the rules. I just doubt that the Big Ten is going to change the rules for Ohio State when they've had to enforce those rules for other teams like Minnesota, like Wisconsin. And on the list goes, right, with folks that lost games because of positive tests. You don't want to show favoritism in this way. I know Ohio State fans are like, yeah, we make this conference. Of course, you're going to bend it to us. But you're going to lose the integrity of the conference and the dignity of the conference when you're looking outside the conference like myself. I'm going to look at that and be like, for real? Why not just say that this is Ohio State's conference or just Ohio State go independent because it's just not going to be a good look. You can't reschedule that game if you haven't rescheduled other games to begin with. They're their rules. They made them. Just, you know. If you're going to build the fantasy world like we do in Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, you got to play within the rules that you created. That's what they did. They made their rules a little bit more stringent than the rest of the conference. Jake Lloyd, shout out, dog. Welcome to the channel. I appreciate you. I guess they're going to play college basketball after this. Shame they're not playing college football after this. I might stick around and watch some college football. Harbaugh won't win. He just won't lose again. Man, the, the number of folks that believe there's some sort of conspiracy in which Michigan will cancel a game against Ohio State is obscene to me. I would want to play that game if I was Michigan. I would want every bit of that game. That's my one opportunity all year to redeem myself. Number one, no, because that ain't about them. That's about me. I don't care to spite Ohio State. I care to go beat Ohio State. That's where I want to live if I am Michigan. I want to cancel a game to spite somebody. No. Because I'm not a coward, and I want to be fair and straight up. I want to beat you straight up. I don't want to cheat. You know, like, that's what y'all are implying that they're going to do, and I, and I don't agree. I don't agree. That's like, no, everybody wants to play football. Everybody wants to play football. There is not a team in America that doesn't want to play football, period. Let me see. This dude, Yusuf, doesn't actually know what's going on in this in this here room, does he? Yusuf, you might you might need to find you a new channel. Uh, let's see. Top four is the same. Yeah, it's, it is. Let me see. OU versus AM in the Cotton Bowl for the rights for Bright Foster and Kendall Daniels. Nah, man, give it, OU and Georgia is the game that I would want to see. Though you're probably right in that the Big 12 champ will probably get Texas AM in that game because Florida will be playing elsewhere, whether it be in the Orange Bowl again, um, or perhaps in the Fiesta Bowl. I still think BYU should be higher than where they are at. I mean, okay, I don't. I mean, I, as I said, there, a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and drop this story into the chat so y'all can read it. Because I, you know, I thought I did a pretty good job laying this out for how BYU is seen and how they're going to be seen in all that they are doing, because it's just, it's like that, so go ahead, check that out, give it your time, then come back in here and talk to me about BYU, 
That's that's what you need to do. I just dropped it into the chat. Let's see. Bro. Let me see what else got in here. BYU dodged games. I, I don't know that they dodged the game against Washington because it looked like that game was actually going to be against San Diego State, but they never got actual terms agreed to. I think there are some games in there that BYU could totally go get in the Pac-12 because they're the only Power 5 conference that has said that they will allow non-conference scheduling. But you also got to pursue those games. You got to let everybody know that you're pursuing those games. You got to let everybody know that they wouldn't give you those games. Like That's, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about optics. We're talking about showing the effort that this is what you wanted to get done and this is what you wanted to do. Uh, Chris Crawl, uh, member to the channel, says, I live in Louisiana, LSU fan I work with, believes Coach O played COVID card to keep his team from a Bama beatdown. Well, they don't get it now. They got to play them this Saturday. Even if that's what he believes, they play it on Saturday. Uh, Corey Carhoff says, Cincinnati is the best team in the state. At Corey Carhoff on the Twitters. That is his take. That is not my take. Cincinnati can play defense. Cincinnati can't score like that. Desmond Ritter gets stopped. It's a totally different team, right? I mean, you're you're acting like you're, you're acting like they're running on the Justin Fields Master T level, and they're not. So, am I? Yo, I love Sean McDonough and I like Jay Billis, but like, what do we? Oh, they're trying to promote their show. Okay, I got it. Let me see. Ohio State should be five or six. I mean, you're going to have to walk that out, SV. Tell me why they should be five or six. Don't just come in here, you know, with your opinion. Build an argument, dog. Uh, so if Clemson loses to Ohio State, or loses to Ohio State, only five plays. Let me see. So if Clemson loses to Ohio State, only plays five games, and since he loses a game, who gets in? Probably Texas A&M at this, at this juncture. Based on their math, like that's who I think it would be because Ampersand, you would get to say the only team that beat us was Alabama and we're a different team and all that noise. They still get beat down by Alabama by two touchdowns, three touchdowns probably because Kellen Mond is, is nowhere near the quarterback that Mac Jones is. Matter of fact, as I just said, Kellen Mond ain't even as good as TJ Finley and Max Johnson in that game. All right, let's see what Gary Barter had to say. BYU strength of schedule is their undoing. See, Gary Barter just said it. You need to go schedule somebody for real. That's how you're going to get our respect. Go schedule a real football team in the Power Five and destroy them, which is to say, go get Oregon. Go get Washington. Matter of fact, Washington might actually want to stay away from y'all because they might think they got an outside chance of making it into the college football playoff by running the table in the Pac-12. That'd be a good reason for them to dodge you. The same way that BYU would be able to basically win a weak national championship by going undefeated the rest of the way. It's right there for them. 